In this lecture, we will talk about finding similar items. In particular, we will cover one of the most famous algorithms in computer science, which is locality-sensitive hashing, or LSH. If you remember the, the big picture of our course, this lecture will be the start of a new thread, which is mining and learning on high dimensional data. And LSH here tries to find similar items. And each item can actually be represented using a high dimensional vector. So why do we want to find similar items? One interesting application is that if we are given an image with a very nice view here, but unfortunately, part of the view is occluded by the rooftops. And, but you really want to complete the build. So what can you do? One thing that you can do is that you can find from a large collection of images from the database, you can find some nearest neighbors of this image. And you can then manually select one of them, which looks the most similar to this image and use the image to complete the view here. And this is called a scene completion problem. So you're given this image and you will find the 10 nearest neighbor from a collection of 20K images. But if you're just finding the nearest neighbor from a small set of images, you may not get what you want. You can see that none of these image, images are similar to this image, but if you can dramatically increase the size of the collection of the images, say 2 million images, there's much higher chance that you can get what you want. In fact, the image that's most similar to yours is right here, and you can use this image to complete the scene. So in fact, many problems can be expressed as finding similar sets. For example, one image is actually just a set of pixels and therefore can be represented using a high dimensional vector. And basically then the problem will be transformed into finding nearest neighbors in high dimensional space. And it's, besides this example of image, the other examples include finding pages with similar words. And the application of this would be, like, for example, one of the duplicated detection or classification of pages by topic. Another example would be to find customers who purchase similar products because each customer can have a set of products that he or she purchased. And we can also have a dual problem of this problem, which is to find products with similar customer sets. And this is actually quite similar to a recommendation problem which we will cover in other lectures. And the third application would be to find patients with similar symptoms or histories. And this would be very useful for a doctor to, to find some treatment recommendations. So the problem that we will focus on today's lecture is that we're given a high dimensional data points like X1 and X2, for example. Again, as we mentioned, image is a, can be represented using a long vector of pixel colors. For example, that we have this very small image, three by three, and it can be represented by this vector. And we're also given some distance function, like D of X1 and X2, which quantifies the distance between X1 and X2. And the goal is to find all the pairs of data points that are within some distance threshold, S. And the naive solution, unfortunately, will take O, o, uh, o n square, where n is the number of data points. For example, you have a large collection of data sets, and n will be the number, a large collection of images, and the n will be number of, of the image. So what we're trying to deal with today is we ask this question of, can this be done in O n time rather than O n square time? And how to do this, let's, let's think about it step by step. As we, we're trying to find similar items, right? but to find similar items, we first need to define the similarity. And to define similarity, we need some kind of distance measure. 
And remember that well, our goal is to find nearest neighbors in high dimensional space. And we formally define nearest near neighbors as points that are in a small distance apart. So for each application, we may need a different kind of distance. And today we will most focus, uh, focus on Jacquard distance or Jacquard similarity. And the Jacquard similarity of two sets is defined as the size of that intersection divided by the size of that union, as we can see here. This is similarity between set one and set two, and it's defined as the intersection over the union. And the distance is the opposite of it. Basically the distance, you can calculate it as one minus the similarity. A concrete example here is that, for example, we have the first set of six points, and this is the second set of five points. We can see that there will be three in the intersection and eight in the union. Therefore, the Jacquard similarity will be just three over eight, and the Jacquard distance will be one minus three over eight, which is five over eight. And the task, let's say that the task today is to find similar documents. And the goal is that we're given a large number, let's say n is in the millions or billions, we're given a large number of documents and we want to find near duplicate pairs. And the applications of this, for example, we, it can be used to find mirror size or approximate mirrors. And we don't, because we don't want to show both sides that are very similar to each other in the search result, right? And another application would be to find similar news articles at many news sites. For example, we are running a a master news site that collect all sorts of news articles, then you don't want to recommend to users that two articles that are basically the same. So you will need to cluster these articles by same story. And we have a lot of challenges. One of them is that many small pieces of one document can actually appear out of order in another. For example, let's say that we have a first document here with four paragraphs and someone may take this, take this document and rearrange the paragraph into this new document. And our algorithm need, need to be able to detect this. The second challenge is that we may have too many documents who can pair all pairs. For example, N, if N is in the millions, you, then you're gonna have a very hard time constructing a like million by million table. And the third challenge would be that the documents may be so large or so many that they cannot fit in my memory. So how do we adjust these challenges? We do it by three essential steps one by one. The first step is that we will first convert these documents into sets. And then we will use min hashing to convert this large set to short signatures while preserving similarity. And the third step would be the key step, which is locality sensitive hashing. We will focus on these short signatures that we generated from the second step. And we can find the pairs of signatures that can likely be pointing to our similar documents. And these steps we will talk about in more details later. So let's look at the big picture. First, the input will be the document. And this is a single step to, to generate the singles here. And the singles is just a set of strings of length k that appear in the document. And we'll have the second step to generate the signatures, the short signature, basically they're very short integer vectors that represent the sets and then these signatures, well, we expect the signature to reflect their similarity, but they, they must be much shorter than the original one. And then the last step is the character sensitive passion tries to find candidate pairs and those pairs of signatures that we need to test for similarity. So let's first focus on the first step, shingling, which is to convert the documents to set. 
Before doing this, let's think about is there any naive approach to this? For example, we can use just use a set of words directly that appears in the document, or we can use a set of important words in the document, but these do not work well. Why? Because they do not account for the ordering of words. But in a document, the ordering of words actually carries a lot of information. And this is why we need shingles. And formally, a K shingle, where K is chosen by us, a K shingle or K gram for a document is a sequence of K tokens that appear in the document. And these tokens can be like characters or words or something else, depending on the application. But now let's just assume that the tokens are characters. Now let's say that the K is two and we have a document one, which is A, B, C, A, B. Then the set of two shingles, which is denoted as S of B1 is A, B, B, C, and C, A. And optionally, we can also uh, define the shingles as a bag or multi-set to count multiple elements multiple times. For example, we can define the shingles as A, B, B, C, C, A, and A, B, where A, B appear twice. So we have defined the shingles, but we're actually trying to find similar items, right? So we need to define the similarity between singles. And the document A, let's say that document A is already, uh, from document A, we already generate uh, its K singles. And this is a set which is denoted as C1. And then equivalently, each document can be just a zero one vector in a space of K shingles, right? and then each unique shingle is one dimension. And the ve vectors here are actually very sparse. For example, let's say that the, we have the original uh, example document there and the set of shingles would be A, B, B, C, and C, A. Then we can represent it using a very sparse bit vector here. And you can see that most of the most of the entries are actually zero and only some of them are one. So a natural similarity measure, of course, would be the Jakar similarity that we talk about. And the, note that the working assumption here is that the documents that have lots of singles in common will have similar text. But the caveat here is it must, you must pick K that is large enough or else most documents will have the most shingles. For example, if you pick K to be really small, let's say that you pick K to be one, then basically most documents will have the words like a uh and the, uh, and this will actually means nothing. So usually K is set to Five for short documents and for long documents, K is set to 10, for example. 